Hey guys, welcome to Joe's RC Corner, and today we're going to be working on the Zenith Cruiser. Uh, we will be getting some of the, the D-Day stripes uh, marked out and uh, painted on the uh, aircraft today, along with uh, finally getting to these angle pieces that uh, mount on the firewall, uh, mount the firewall and the engine mount, doubler basically is what it is. It's going to attach the engine mount to the rest of the uh, rest of the airframe along with the uh, firewall. So we're gonna go ahead and work on that. So I already have one of them uh, mounted in here and uh, came out pretty good. Um, right now we're working on the lower one. Uh, I'll turn the camera around, let you guys take a look. So right down in here, uh, we have the lower mount, which goes on these inner uh, set of holes here, right along the long garon that uh, comes out down, down over here and it gets bolted onto this one here. Uh, I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see it right here. It bolts onto this this one here and right up here. So uh, we're gonna get that lined up, get that center hole marked. We're gonna get one hole drilled uh, in the correct location. So we have to make sure that this is mounted right up against here. Line everything up in here, and then I'm gonna mark it on the inside underneath, uh, from underneath with a marker. So that way I can get that first one in there, and then from that point on, I can back drill the other two uh, right into this. So that's the plan. We're gonna go ahead and get that knocked out. All right, guys, so we have the uh, the uh, engine mount uh, doubler pieces are in place. I did not uh, open up the holes in here yet. Uh, left those as the number 40s because um, I don't know exactly where everything is going to fit and what size uh, the engine mount bolts need to be. So, But uh, other than that, they are in. They are sealed with uh, the self-etching primer. I do have the uh, countersunk screw down in here. And of course the standard AN bolts up there. So that's good to go. Uh, right now the firewall is still removable even with these here. Um, because to get my upper skin on, since I didn't split the this front section up here, I left this in, so I want to be able to get the firewall or get this on um, by taking the firewall off, slipping it over, Clico in, and getting that on place. Um, I do need to make the L angles to uh, stiffen this section up. Uh, these are pre-drilled, pre uh, but once I get these uh, even though I'm going to have to drill this out where I painted, um, the rivets will cover up that. Um, I may still paint this black. I don't know yet. We'll have to uh, take a look and uh, see how I want to do that. Because these uh, rivets will be will not be painted if I go with that. Um, which, I mean, it's not bad, um, as you can see up here. I only have one rivet in here right now, a couple of them just to hold them and hold this in place. Uh, didn't really finalize that yet. Um, same with the, on the inside here, on the back side, I did the same thing, only uh, maybe one or two rivets over there, just in case I have to pull that off. Um, see how that goes. But uh, in the meantime, what we're going to be doing next is uh, we're going to clean up from doing the steel work over there, and uh, then we're going to start getting out the pencil and start doing measuring to find out where the white needs to be on the back of the fuselage. So that way we can get everything prepped for uh, adding those uh, D-Day stripes back there. So uh, that's what we're working on right now. So we're going to go ahead and clean up a little bit and uh, get everything kind of prepped to uh, get cleaned up and uh, get prepped for a little bit of paint inside here and also a little bit of paint on the uh, the whites on the outside here.
Okay guys, so uh, we do have the aircraft now is in the paint booth. I just have to cover up that last section down there. It shouldn't take too long, uh, but I got some tack cloth. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe down this area. Now, as you can see, I scuffed this area up because I want the white paint to adhere to this very, very well. The uh, the paint painter's tape that I'm using is the uh, for delicate surfaces. So hopefully it doesn't, uh, it shouldn't cause any problems peeling up uh, of the other paints. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and wipe this down and uh, cover that last section up there. I don't want to get paint, white paint on that. I got the paint mixed up and it's sitting there ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and get this white on and uh, that's for the D-Day stripes. Uh, then we'll hopefully uh, two coats of the white on here and should be able to do the black stripes with uh, basically one coat. So we'll see how that works out. All right, guys, let's get going. Okay guys, so uh, really quick, just want to give you an update. Uh, so we have the white is now on. Uh, this is a one light dusting coat and then one heavy coat. The manufacturer actually says to do two heavy coats, so, um, but I'm not sure I really need it. It looks like it's covering pretty well, but uh, there are a couple spots here where it looks like it's not. So I may go back over it again with one more coat just to make sure that we've got a good uh, good coverage here. Um, we'll come around to the other side, take a quick look at it as well. Now, my only concern would be uh, going back and covering up uh, or... or uh, my only concern really is coming back and taping this off. Uh, as this side, you can actually kind of see some streaks in it. So we're going to do one more uh, coat of the white on here before we uh, call her done. Uh, so one more full wet coat on this side. The top looks pretty darn good. I'm not pretty happy with that. Uh, but uh, this side definitely needs another coat. Let's see what's on the bottom here. Uh, bottom coverage looks pretty good, but again, this is a, a this is gonna be a, a higher traffic area where the oil and so on uh, so we want to make sure that we have a good uh, coverage of the white here as well and then we're going to get ready to tape off the black uh, once this uh, has about i'm going to give it a couple maybe a couple hours uh, once i get this last coat of white on here give it a couple hours and let that really cure um, and we'll see if i can get another coat on it uh, if I can get that taped off on and uh, and 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 see see if it stays, so that's where we are right now, guys. I think that's going to look pretty good, and we'll get that black on there and get those stripes. So, okay, that's it for right now.
Okay, guys, so uh, all we did was the time lapse, as you saw, but uh, we are done for the day. Uh, tomorrow, we'll come out and find something else to do. There's plenty, plenty more to get done. Um, but, um, yeah, as you can see, uh, we now have D-Day stripes are now on the sides of the airplane, top and bottom, all set, ready to go. Um, I'm really happy with how that came out. She looks really good. And, uh, the, the paint that I got, yeah, it says that it's flat, but it's not really all that flat. It kind of came out more as a satin, which I kind of like that. Uh, as you can see, there's some slight um, glare in the uh, in the paint. So I think that's going to work out really nice. And uh, it's not going to be too uh, too flat to where fingerprints and, and everything get really bad on it. So, uh, But we will probably still use the satin uh, or matte finish uh, uh, cleaners on this just to keep it looking good. Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy with this. That looks great. Um, and uh, if you look down here, um, I do, we're going to work on this probably tomorrow, uh, tomorrow Sunday. So we'll work on that. Let me go ahead and turn the camera around and I'll show you the other uh, parts that we got completed today. Okay, so looking up here on the front of the airframe here uh, where the firewall is, uh, we do have the um, engine mount supports that uh, for the mounts. The engine mount will attach up here where the uh, this uh, 30 second, 3 32nd Clico is. Uh, engine mount goes here, bolts through in here, and then this is bolted to the longer on on the side of the airframe. Uh, and then there's another one down here. And that this one down here uses a, uh, a Phillips head uh, bolt and then two normal bolts back here, the AN4. Five and three dash fives, I believe they were. Uh, same thing over on this side. Uh, and we just did the uh, self etching primer on these just to keep these uh, protected. Uh, and then the other one down here as well. These batteries are just here to keep the nose down because we're missing an engine still. Uh, that should be coming here on Monday, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we'll get the nose wheel completed here, and I do have to paint the push rods. That go in that area um i did fix up my my uh strut piece here on the side that is now uh only washered on one side uh not on both anymore uh same with the one up here that's all fixed uh, we have this is going to stay the olive drab and we are going to be using this weather strip in here uh as the edging for my uh flare shield and now the only next decision that I have here is uh, whether or not I'm going to do the red, white, and blue stars and bars right here, uh, like on the L4s, or am I going to do a uh, blacked out uh, stars and bars back here? And I'm not sure yet, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out, I'm going to cut out on my Cricut. Uh, my vinyl cutter. I'm going to go ahead and uh, print one, uh, cut one out, and I want to lay it over this. I don't want to stick it down yet, but I want to lay it over here so I can kind of get an idea of what that'll look like, and then I can go ahead and make my decision based off of that. So that's the plan, guys. Okay, guys, so that's the plan. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe. The L4 Cricket's coming together. I got to get cleaned up, and uh, Hit that subscribe button if you like what you're seeing. And I'll see you on the next video. So keep building, keep flying. And uh, cricket power, guys. All right. Bye now.